3z equals 6. And let's say we have x minus z equals 0. And let's say we have x minus y minus z equals negative 4. So where the matrices have come from is matrix 1, matrix, or linear equation 1, 2, and 3. So think about what this is really doing. This is the x, y, and z axis where the z-axis is coming out at you. So basically you have three lines that are crossing and those three lines crossing cross in x, y, z space. There's a coordinate for it. Okay, you have, there's multiple coordinates that can exist, but that's really what we're coming down to. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create a matrix based off this. So I'm going to, in front of any letters that I don't have a uh, number in, I'm going to make sure I have a one. And I have an X column, a Y column, a Z column, and then I have a uh, constant column. So looking just at this row, I have one, two, three, six. At this column, I have one, zero, negative one, zero. In this last column, I have one, negative one, negative one, negative four. So this is the matrix. This is the matrix that we. Um, we're going to go ahead and use and we're going to start solving. And so our goal is to get this matrix to look like this. And then I have some numbers that are over here, which this is our X column, this is our Y, this is our Z, is what takes place. Okay, so it's how you go ahead and solve it. Now there's things that are legal to do and they're legal to do at any point during these problems. Um, when we start these problems, we want to start out saying, hey, I like having a 1 here, but I know that I want to have a 0 there. So if I just flip-flop the second row for the first row, that could, that could work to our, our advantage. So I just swapped them. It's called a row swap. Okay, so it's just a little trick of the trade. And you can do a row swap at any point during a problem as long as the math that it had wanted to be done. So our next step, and we've been talking about this a little bit, is I want this and this to both become zeros. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply my whole first row by negative 1. So that's going to give me negative 1, 0, 1, 0. And then I have 1, 2, 3, 6. I have 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 4. Being that I had the column of, of 1s like that, that's going to make it relatively easy. So I'm going to add this row to this row to get a new um, bottom row. So I know that I'm going, to go, I'm, I'm going to go back to my original here in a second. So if I wanted to, I'd just go ahead and write that. But what I'm doing is I'm using that row right now to add to the second row. So if I go negative 1 plus 1, I get 0. 0 plus 2, I get 2. 0 plus 3, I get 4. 0 plus 6, I get 6. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the bottom row. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. 0 plus negative 1. 1 plus negative 1. And 0 plus negative 4. Okay, so now I would like, I want this to be ones and zeros. I want this to become back a one. So if I divide this whole second row by two, my first row doesn't get affected by it. If I divide everything by two, I get zero divided by two, two divided by two, four divided by two, six divided by two. And then the bottom row becomes this. All right, we're looking pretty good. So now I have the ones and zeros. I have zero, one. I want this to become a zero down here. So if I add, if I add these together, if I add second row 
and that the first row stays as is, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. The second row stays as is, 0, 1, 2, 3. 0 plus 0 is 0. 1 plus negative 1 is 0. Uh, 2 plus 0 is 2. 3 plus negative 4 is negative 1. So we're starting to really look pretty good about this problem. Um, I now want, technically I would want this to become a 1, but I'm not going to worry about that yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this whole row by negative 1, and I'm going to add it to this row. So the top row stays as is. Middle row stays this. Bottom row becomes this because I multiplied. And then I'm going to add these together. So the top row stays the same. Middle row, 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. 1 plus 3 is 4. And then my bottom row, we just had this. Okay. From there, we now want to convert this to be a 1. So that's going to be a 1. So I'm going to multiply this whole row by um, negative 1 half. Top row stays the same. Middle row turns into this. Bottom row turns into 0, 0. Negative half of negative 2 is positive 1. Negative half of 1 is negative 1. All right, we are almost done. So I have my diagonal of 1s. I need this to become a 0. So if I add the third row to the first row, that should take place. So I add the third to the first. So I get 0 plus 1 is 1. 0 plus 0 is 0. Negative or 1 plus negative 1 is 0. Negative half added to 0 is negative half. Middle row stays as is. Bottom row we can keep as is as well. So my answer to this problem is this. Or you could list it as this. Okay, so that's one problem. And I know you're all impressed by it. So what that is, and we will start, we'll show that um, in class tomorrow, how to plug in that matrix and then just solve it right away, um, which is great. We've already kind of seen that a little bit where we took, we had some matrix times x, y, z equals some, some other thing. And what we did is we found the inverse of that. So the inverse of m is m to the negative 1. And then we squeeze that in there. So then we get x, y, z equals m to the negative 1 times whatever this was. So that's the way we had been doing it, but there is a faster way that we'll take care of it tomorrow or, thir or Wednesday. Okay? Now, in no way, shape, or form do I want you to go about doing these, but the one thing to realize is you are not limited to the size of a matrix. So the kind of work that you could be putting forth on these matrices is a lot. It, and it's I'm not trying to, you know, say, oh, look, look, ta-da, here you are. I'm just trying to show you that there are certain things that do work out with matrices, and they work out better, especially when you have the technology. So um, this is just a, a problem out of the book, and this might be something that, you know, if you were working for a corporation, you might have the same 
type of idea. It says, a business plans to use three methods of advertising. They're going to use cable TV, okay, radio, and newspaper. The cost per ad in thousands of dollars is given by the matrix. So we have this matrix CC, which is 20, 9, and 6. And these are in the thousands. Okay, so you'd have to multiply. So this is your cable. This is your radio. And this is your newspaper. Now, I, I know a lot of you might be thinking, why would I even worry about the newspaper? I, I get it. Your generation is not going to be the people. I'd say once you get to in your 30s, you all get into your 30s, even early 40s, I can't imagine there's going to be a newspaper ever delivered to your house. I, I think it's I, I think it's something that's going to go away, which I'm saddened by because I do enjoy a newspaper. I do read a newspaper, um, but it's just something from my upbringing that was a sense of calming. Always when somebody was reading a newspaper, it was just relaxed. Okay, so this matrix is given by that. It says, suppose the business has three different target populations. You have uh, female teenagers. You have single females who are age 20 to 35. So a teenager would obviously be 13 to 19. And married uh, females. And they're just targeting females. I mean, I, you know that we're going to advertise everybody. So this is 35 to 60. I guess you can't be married after 60. Uh, Matrix T shows the number of ads per month directed at each of these groups. So then we have another matrix C. They're going to call it matrix C T. And we're going to hit it like this. I got 50, 40, 45. I have 30, 60, 40. I have 5, 30, and 60. And what this goes with is this is cable, this is radio, and this is the newspaper. Okay. So find the matrix that gives the cost per type of ad for each group of students, or each group of people. Okay, so basically this row here are the 13 to 19. This group here is the 20 to 35. And this group here is the 35 to 60. Now, notice that they are hitting the teenagers a lot more with the cable and they're hitting the older population with the newspaper and the middle population is hitting with the radio I mean that is what it is so what we can do is a few things we realize that this is in the thousands so if I were to take 20 9 6 times the 50 30 5 40 60 30, 45, 40, and 60. And we know that this was in the thousands as far as the um, amount of money spent. We can easily do this, um, this problem. And then, but we have to be cautious how we're doing it. So we have to think, can I take a 3 by 1 times a 3 by 3? Well, the inside dimensions won't match. So there's got to be a different way that we're doing this problem. Okay? So the way that we would probably be doing this problem is this. 50, 30, 5, 40, 60, 30, 45, 40, 60. And then I'm going to multiply by the 20, the 9, and the 6. And we know that these are our target audiences. The first column is going to be the 13 and 19 year olds. 
The second group will be the 20 to 35 year olds. And then the third group will be the 35 to 60 year olds. So now when it's set up this way, I have a three by three times a three by one. Inside dimensions match. Outside dimensions will tell us what our answer is going to be. It's going to be, oh, not a 30. It's going to be a three by one. Okay. But how do we get that three by one? Well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this whole column times this whole column. So I'm going to go 50 times 20 plus 30 times 9 plus 5 times 6. And then I'm going to do the next one. 40 times 20 plus 60 times 9 plus 30 times 6. And I'm going to take my last one. I'm going to go 45 times 20 plus 40 times 9 plus 60 times 6. And if we do the math, I don't know, I think we could handle that okay. So, and then realize our answer, we have to add three decimal places too. Times 20. So that's going to give me 1,000 plus 270 plus 30. This one's going to give me 40 times 20. Was that 800 plus 540 plus 180? And then 45 times 20 is what 900 plus 360 plus 360. And then if we just do the math, 1000 plus 270 plus 30, that's 1300. 800 plus 540 plus 180, that's equal to 1520. And then 900 plus 360 plus 360, 1620. So what this means is, remember we said these are all thousands, so I'm going to multiply these all by a thousand. And so you're talking about adding... And then one five two zero 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 zero, and then that's one eight two zero 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 zero. So, oops, I don't know what happened there. Sorry, get away from there. Ah, there we go. So this is the thirteen to nineteen year olds. This company is going to spend one point three million dollars advertising to them. The uh, 20 to 36 year olds, the company is going to spend $1,520,000 advertising to them. And the, the older population, the 36 to 60 group, they're going to spend $1,820,000 advertising to them through all the different networks. You know, is, does advertising work? I, yeah. It's easy to say an advertisement doesn't work when you're not interested in the product. Um, but there's a lot of times that there's something I'm interested in. Uh, what was something? We had a, an amusement park in Arizona growing up as a kid, and it, it kind of you know, went away and became condominiums in about 1985, but it was a place called Legend City. It was a pretty small amusement park, but it was the only thing Arizona had. And I remember they used to advertise um, Legend City on a show called The Wallace and Ladmo Show, which was a morning TV show during the week that they would have on. And they'd also advertise it, Legend City, on uh, Saturday mornings for Saturday morning cartoons. And, uh, but why did they advertise Legend City that? Well, the kids wanted to go to Legend City. And if you were too young, then your parents had to take you to Legend City. If you were a teenager, you, you could go to Legend City on your own. But Legend City was a place where they used to have like small concerts and, uh, Actually, back in the day, they had some pretty good concerts that showed up to Legend City that that are unheard of at you know at today's caliber. I mean, they had bands like The Police, The Who. Um, who else showed up to that? There was uh, Led Zeppelin. I mean, I'm talking about a venue that maybe would seat 500 people. So people were seeing these concerts 
full-on concerts at Legend City for pretty cheap, but would they be advertising those concerts to the little kids? And the answer is no. They would they would start targeting the teenagers with you know when they would be watching television or whatever media they had. I mean, we didn't have social media like today. Like we we all know we find you know people say, oh, it's a coincidence. I was talking about uh, chocolate chip cookies, and I went on to Facebook, and there's a Chips Ahoy chocolate chips cookie ad. Well, it, I really don't think it's a coincidence. And I know that Google and Facebook and all those guys saying, oh, no, 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 we're not listening. Really? Because you didn't show chocolate chip cookie commercials to me or have these ads of chocolate chip cookies before, but now after I talked about it, you put an advertisement on. I call I call bull on the whole thing. I think they're fibbing to us, and I think that they are um, – figuring out what we want and they're tra tra tracing us along and I know that now they've said oh uh, these sort these big companies will no longer do that oh so now you're admitting they were doing it? oh no, no no they weren't doing it but they won't do it anymore I don't know I don't know what do y'all think so um, that's kind of where we were going to go with matrices for today uh, there's a few more things that we're going to hit we're going to hit something called a determinant but we'll hit that tomorrow. And this is just the value of a matrix. Um, and these are all things that we will see on the calculator. And of course, we can use the calculators in class that I have here. Um, but we have a few that we will work on. But then, so Tuesday, Wednesday, we will review, go over determinants, do more on, I said more on, I'm sorry, more on the calculator with the matrices. And then Thursday, Friday, we have the quiz to finish up the matrix unit. Well, to finish up for now, we'd actually probably, actually I haven't looked too much further. I was just having fun with this stuff. Yeah, we should be good. I got pretty, I've, I got pretty far into the matrices what I wanted to get to, so that's, that's good. Okay, yeah, so... We'll finish up on Thursday, Friday with a quiz. This is as a group. So if you miss, I'm sorry. Maybe one of your friends will ditch with you so you can come back and do it as a group or a pair. So, and then some of you have been asking about the orange story. So we'll, we'll see if we can squeeze in, see if we can squeeze something in there about the infamous orange story. Those of you who have heard it claim it's the better of the two stories between that and the Halloween story, but that's what we have. All right, what time are we out of here? And don't lie because I'll find out when the bell rings. Do you even know? I believe it's 38. Are you kidding? All right. All right, so let's have you try this one. I'm going to give you a major C, but I'm going to, I want you to do it the long way to solve it. But I'm going to give you a smaller major C. I'm not going to give you a three by four. I'm going to give you a two by three if I can find one. Mm. All right, try and, try and solve this one on your own. So what you want this to look like is you're trying to get it to be this. And then you have some numbers. Try and do that. So I've already got the one here for you. So your next step is to make that a zero. So think about how you would do it. And I need to go get a sip of water. Excuse me a moment. Let's see if you can figure it out. I'd say multiply that whole top row by negative 2, add it to the second row.
Y'all get it? Are we still working? Zero, two, negative nine. Is that an all right move? I'd keep this two down here. Let's multiply everything here by negative two and add it to that, that row. Actually, on negative one, excuse me. Negative one and nine. Now we can add that. So that's going to give me one. Oh my gosh. That should have been a negative two. All right. Add that, and that, that's zero. That's uh, 16. And I get zero, negative two, nine. I want that to be a one, so I'll divide by negative two. So I get 1016. And then 0, 1, negative 9 halves. That's just a simple algebraic expression that'll work out nicely. Okay. So I got second COVID shot Saturday. Seems to be okay. Sorry, I'm just really thirsty. But uh, that's what we have. All right. So let's end with a fun. This is a business class, so let's figure out this riddle. Some of you might have heard it before, but let's figure this out. Okay. Uh, you have 1,000 lockers, just like in the hallway. And they are numbered from 1 to 1,000. You have 1,000 students. Lined up. Okay. So, let's just draw a few lockers. Okay, so, and this is locker one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, there, but there's a thousand of them. I'm sorry, I'm not going to waste your time drawing a thousand lockers up. So, person number one goes through and closes every locker, or makes sure that all, they're all closed. So, once person number one is done through all 1,000 lockers, you have a thousand lockers that are closed. Here comes student number two. Student number two is going to open every other locker. So by the time student number two gets all the way through, there are going to be 500 lockers open and 500 lockers closed. Still with me in this adventure? Student number three is going to come through and do the opposite every third locker. So if it's open, they close it. If it's closed, they opened it. So first locker doesn't. Second locker stays open. Third locker is now open. Fourth locker stays open. Fifth locker stays closed. Sixth locker now closes. Seventh locker um, stays closed. Eighth locker stays open. So there's our first three students. The fourth student comes through and does the opposite every fourth. So this one stays closed. This one stays open. Open. They now close this one. This one stays closed, closed, closed. And now they close this one. Okay, do you understand the pattern that we're doing? So my question.
What lockers are closed after all 1,000 students go through? And let's say they have to be honest students, so the 500th student will do the opposite to the 500th locker and to the 1,000th locker. The 300th student does the opposite to the 300th, the 600th, and the 900th. So what do you think, friends? Figure that out. So right now I will guarantee you that locker number one and locker number four are indeed closed. And they will remain closed. I will guarantee you those. And I will guarantee you that two and three will be definitely open. Any ideas? Or are you guys just out playing a game? Um, um is it? Bring that back next time, see if you can figure it out. Any other questions? If not, get out of here, friends. Have a great day. Take care of one another. Look forward to seeing you next time.